Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and today we're going to create chocolate confections that are the perfect pick-me-up for any day. And what's a better compliment for chocolate than chewy caramel? So first we gotta go down to River Street Sweets to pick up some of the freshest, creamiest caramel. And then we're gonna bring it back and we're just gonna drench the brownies and ice cream with it. Then I'm gonna be going back to my kitchen where I have my recipe book open to page delicious. Cause that's the only way to describe my chocolate toffee trifle. And then finally, it's the Savannah chocolate cake smothered in hot fudge sauce. So y'all bring your sweet tooth, cause there's always room for chocolate. Good morning. Today's show is about sexy southern chocolates and I'm going to be running down to River Street Sweets in hopes of finding some caramel to go with our chocolate. It's going to be a real sweet show today so I hope y'all will stick with me. How are you doing? Hi. Would you like to try some peanut brittle? Oh I'd love to try some of your peanut brittle. Mmm, everything looks so good. But well, what I'm what I'm here today for is actually some caramel. Pat's mixing up a batch of caramel for you up there, Paula. Can I go in there with Pat? Yeah, you can go in there. Hey, Pat. Hello. The girls told me that you um. Are you getting these samples of pralines ready? Yep. What, what's wrong with this right here? That one is been sitting around. I don't get out crumbs. I'll yeah. eat all. I'll try this. I'll eat all hey, your crumbs. Man. The girls told me that you had my caramel almost ready. Yes, ma'am. Right here. Now, is this the same caramel that you cover your apples with? Yes, ma'am. We put it in the bear claws also. Well, it's so, so good. Do you want me to lick your beaters for <laughs> you? <laughs> it's temptation, isn't it? Oh, my goodness, yes. You're the man. There you go. Be good. Careful. It's kind of hot. It is hot, isn't yeah. it? Ooh, let me get a good grip. Well, Pat, yeah, thanks, folks. honey, and You're I'll welcome. see. You. I'll see you next trip. Isn't that a great store? When I want to give somebody a special gift, I always call them because they've just got the sweetest candies in the world. And I lucked up today. I. I came back with the caramel and I can't wait for us to use it. And the first recipe that I'm gonna start with is so quick and easy today. I'm actually gonna start with a prepackaged brownie mix. And you'll just follow the instructions on the brownie package. Do just like it says. Now, I actually prefer the brownie mix that they refer to as a chewy brownie. So follow the instructions for the chewy brownie and they'll be so good. Now mine calls for water, oil, and two eggs. And we're gonna beat this up for about 50 strokes. It's so simple. You don't even have to pull out your electric mixer for this one. All right, now I've given this one about 50 wax. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna lightly grease a 13 by nine by two pan. I'm just gonna scrape that into our pan just gonna spread those out evenly. And now I'm gonna take brown sugar and butter. And my butter has been brought to room temperature so it's nice and soft. And I'm just gonna cut that in. By the time you get it right, it should look like kind of a very coarse cornmeal. Now I've got our butter cut into our brown sugar and I've thrown in some pecans and I'm gonna just Stir those around into our brown sugar and butter. And now I'm gonna sprinkle this on top. This is a great way to take a prepackaged brownie mix and make it extra special. All right, now we're gonna put this in the oven and we're gonna cook it 
according to the directions on our box, which is 350 for about 25 minutes. All right, I've got that one in the oven ready, and you know I've got another one right over here waiting to come out. Oh, and it smells so good. And I'm gonna sit him right there because I'm gonna dig into some of this rich caramel that we got from River Street Sweets. And I'm actually gonna, oh. Doesn't that look just delicious? So delicious. Now I'm gonna heat this very lightly because I'm not through with those brownies yet. There's some more things we're gonna do to those bad boys. And while I'm waiting for that to soften, I think I'll go ahead and start cutting on my brownies. Oh gosh, that crunchy top is so delicious. All right, now caramel's starting to heat up a little. Oh, I think that caramel's about to get right where we want it. All right, I think that I'm gonna begin by taking me out a brownie. You know, that first square is always the hardest to get out. But I think I got him. Mm. He looks so good. I've been a good girl, so I think I might put two on there. All right, and I'm gonna turn this down extra low because our caramel is just perfect to finish off this dessert. I've got some ice cream already made in the freezer. I'm gonna just use a store-bought ice cream for this rather than making any because I want this to be delicious but quick and simple. So I'm gonna just get me a nice round ball of ice cream and I'm gonna kind of quickly form him in my hands, melt him quickly, and I'm gonna toss him in nuts. Now you can actually do this earlier. You can make you a bunch of these and have in the freezer right ready. Oh, that's looking like a pretty good Sunday, isn't it? I'm gonna drizzle him with a little of the caramel from River Street Sweets to go on top of the caramel that I actually baked into the brownie. Oh, and I can't eat this without whipped cream. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. And a cherry on top. Doesn't he just look wonderful? And this is one of those dishes that's nice to share with somebody. Look, the caramel is beginning to harden from the cold of the ice cream. Mmm. No wonder they love those caramelized brownies. Y'all grab a cup of coffee and don't go anywhere because coming up next, I'm going to be making a Savannah chocolate cake with a hot fudge sauce. So y'all stick around. It's going to get sweeter. I'm just gathering up the last of the couple of things that I'm gonna need to finish off my Savannah chocolate cake with a hot fudge sauce. Now I'm gonna start by putting our brown sugar in our mixer and I'm gonna use about a half a cup of shortening, not butter. So I'm gonna cream those together. All right, now I'm gonna add a little buttermilk and you'll see I keep playing with the speed on my mixer uh, depending on the appropriate time for high speed versus low speed. All right, I've got some chocolate that I've melted. So now I'm gonna just add that to the cake mixture. And I'm using an unsweet chocolate for the cake batter. All right, and while that's mixing, I'm gonna take all-purpose flour and a little salt and baking powder and sift those together real quick. And now I'm gonna add my eggs one at a time. And
and the last one. All right, now I'm going to lower that speed on the mixer, and I'm going to add our flour to that a little bit at a time. And you can see it's starting to get nice and creamy now and a nice chocolatey color. All right, now I'm going to finish off our cake by adding about a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. And we're ready to go. There's nothing to it. And isn't that a pretty chocolatey color? Now I'm going to pour my batter into a prepared greased pan that's been dusted with flour. And I'm going to spread that out evenly into our pan. And then I'm going to give it just a couple of whacks on the counter to level it out and that'll prevent little holes all through your cake because you've gotten the air out of it and brought it to the top and busted them out. Okay, so this one's ready to go in the oven. We're going to cook it at 350 for about 40 or 45 minutes. And while that's baking, I'm going to come over here and make our fudge sauce. So I'm going to start with a stick of butter and German chocolate. I think that's about four ounces. And then an unsweetened chocolate. And we're just going to let that melt together. And then we don't have but just three more ingredients to add to it. I'm going to add a little bit of evaporated milk. You can hear our pan's nice and hot. And then we're going to add a little bit of powdered sugar. And we're just going to go back and forth with these ingredients until they're all used up. Oh, sauce is going to be delicious on that cake. All right, and the rest of the milk. And then the rest of the powdered sugar. Now, I'm going to let this come to a nice boil and cook for about eight minutes until it's thick and creamy. And that's it. There's nothing to it. Now I've got another cake in the other oven that should be ready. And we'll pull it out. Let's see what we've got. Oh, it looks good. And you can see by me knocking out the air bubbles, what a smooth finish it gives us to our cake. Now I'm going to take this off of the stove because I've actually made some earlier. And I'll show you what it looks like after it's cooked for eight minutes and cooled a little bit. You can see it's kind of gotten thick. Looks so good. Oh. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to have me a piece of that chocolate cake. But before I serve myself a piece of cake, I'm going to add the vanilla to this sauce because, you know, you don't want to add extracts while your dishes are cooking because you don't want that flavor to evaporate. So we're going to add it at the last minute. Okay, mmm, looks delicious. And I think with the aroma of the chocolate, it just smells so good. And you know, I don't think I'm gonna put anything on my piece of cake but the hot fudge sauce, believe it or not. And maybe a few chocolate curls. Mmm, and maybe just a little extra. Mmm, looks just delicious, doesn't it? Mmm, that's so belly pleasing. Y'all stick around because coming up next, one of my favorite ways to put a dessert together, chocolate trifle. The last dessert I'm gonna finish up with today is a dessert that Savannians dearly love, and that's trifles. Now, we make all kind of trifles in Savannah. We just love our trifle, no matter which way we get it. So for today's dish, I'm simply using a boxed cake mix. So I have just followed the directions on the cake mix box, and I'm gonna cook it according to the instructions on the box. Gonna give it a couple of whacks, and into the oven it goes. Now I've got one that's already ready. 
Yeah, it's pulled away from the pan. Now this is a great way for you to know if your cake is done or not when it starts pulling away from the dish, you know it's ready. All right, now we're gonna pierce our cake. Now you can do this with a fork or skewers, but we're just gonna come in here and it doesn't matter if some of your cake sticks to your fork and it messes up, that's all right. It'll just make it that much better and give it that much of a bigger hole for us to pour our liqueur on it. So that looks good. You want plenty of holes. And normally I'll use some kind of liqueur, but you know today, I think I'm gonna use something a little different. I made a new friend the other day in the restaurant. She was so cute. Her name was Mary Alice Pitchford. And she was telling me about a product that she had found that she just loves because it has no carbs and no sugar. So she ran to the car because she said, Paula, would you believe I have a bottle in the car? Normally, Mary Alice puts this in her coffee because it makes her feel like she's almost having a rich, sinful dessert coffee. Now I'm gonna put about a half a cup of this because I want this good and moist. And I'm gonna stick it in the fridge and let it sit for about three hours and let it soak that up. I don't too much worry about putting too much of this because there's no alcohol in it. So if any of the children get a hold to it, that they won't catch a buzz. So I'm just gonna slip this in. And I've got another one right here that's been soaking. And these are so easy to assemble. There's no, no laws or rules that you have to follow for a trifle. Now I'm gonna cut our cake in fourths, starting down the middle and then making two more cuts. All right, I'm gonna put together the cake in different layers. I'm actually gonna pour just a little chocolate syrup on the bottom of the trifle dish so that the cake that I put in will actually have something to stick to. All right, I think I'm gonna get this bowl a little closer to me and I think I can do it a little easier with it closer. So I'm just gonna drop my cake in chunks. It doesn't matter what it looks like, just as long as you keep your layers a little even. Like I said, there's no rules. You just make your own rules as you go. Now I'm gonna pour a little bit more syrup over the cake. Oh, this is one of those wonderful desserts that you can make ahead of time or even the day before. All right, I'm gonna take a little whipped cream and just put a layer of that in there. It's looking like a hot fudge sundae. Looks so good. All right, now I'm gonna crumble up a little bit of my favorite chocolate candy bar. And it, this is a toffee, so when Michael bites into it, he'll have big chunks of crunchy candy. All right, now we're gonna come in here with another layer of cake. See our pretty layers, how it's coming together? All right, a little bit more chocolate. Mmm, 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 mmm. Another layer of chocolate candy bar. I'm gonna do another little layer of cream. Just gonna kinda spread it out a little bit, kinda right there in the center. Like I said, no rules to this party. And it's ready. Okay, so I'm ready to dip me up a little taste. I can't stand it. Oh, look, I'm gonna get down in there and get me some of that fresh whipped cream. Mm. Oh, and make sure I get some of that candy bar. And I'm gonna top it with, I think, just a little bit more of this hot fudge sauce. And this was actually the same sauce that I made for the other cake. So you can do lots of things with that one sauce. <sighs> you know, too bad, this is the only size spoon that I could find, but I'll make it work. Mm. We know what we're doing in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> Y'all stick around and then I'll be right back for some tips. Y'all don't get too far. I just love desserts. Now when you're baking cookies and cakes, 
You have to go buy a formula, but when it comes time to eating them, you can do so many things with them. You can buy vanilla ice cream and personalize everybody's bowl with peppermint or Oreo cookies or cookie dough even. And for cereals, try taking a sweetened cocoa and sprinkling on your cereal. It will be so good. So I hope all of these tips will come in handy for you. I've changed into something a little bit more comfortable and I'm here waiting on Michael and I have all of his favorite chocolate desserts. The chocolate toffee trifle and the Savannah chocolate cake with a hot fudge sauce and these caramelized brownies topped with fresh vanilla ice cream and whipped cream. I hope I've given you some great ideas for your sexy chocolate night with your favorite person too. So until next time, America, I wish you sweet dishes from my kitchen to yours.